Hey there, cloud enthusiasts and AWS aficionados. Welcome back to Code Cloud's AWS Tidbits for July. This is your monthly dose of everything new and exciting in the world of AWS services. I'm Michael Forrester. We're gonna dive into the hottest AWS updates that have come out since July 1st, all the way to July 31st. Buckle up, because we've got some game-changing announcements to cover, from major updates to the well-architected framework to a brand new European sovereign cloud region. You're in for a treat. We also got a little bit of DevSecOps Ninja techniques out there. For those of you who weren't able to go to the AWS Reinforced Security Conference, we're gonna be exploring new features like S3 access grants, some innovative ways to debug your code with Amazon Q and Gen AI, and even how to do something really special with gaming services on Kubernetes, so stick with me. Plus, if you're gearing up for AWS certifications, particularly the new AI and machine learning certifications, you're not gonna to wanna to miss our segment on the new question types. It's a brief introduction, but it will allow you to prepare for those exams, which are actually coming out in August. So you can be prepared for this. Before we dive in, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more AWS goodness. And hey, drop us a comment below. Tell us what services you want. If you want a tutorial, let us know. Which AWS service are you most excited about right now? Let me know. All right, let's get this cloud party started and let's keep you at the cutting edge of AWS. All right, here we are. It is July, 2024. Can you believe that the year is almost over? We're like at month eight, basically. Mm. Stay with me. Okay, number one. So first of all, if you haven't heard of the well-architected framework and you're working with AWS, probably a good idea. I know you're gonna say, Michael, I am an engineer. I'm an operations person. I'm in DevOps. I do not do design work. I just wanna point out that almost, if you're an engineer, you're making design decisions, they might be at a micro level versus a macro level, but you're still making design decisions. This could be as simple as what services you use, what languages you use, what frameworks you use. Those are all design decisions, even if you're not an architect. So why is that relevant? Well, number one this month is actually that the well-architected framework, which has six pillars currently, one of them is not frequently talked about, which I hope that changes at some point in the near future. It's sustainability. But the other five pillars, which are security, reliability, performance efficiency, act, cost optimization, and operational excellence are staples for every certification and every piece of implementation guidance that AWS provides. So what's interesting is that there's been major updates to both the security and the resiliency portions of the well-architected framework, and they also published a change enablement white paper in the cloud, which is also worth a read. But if you haven't gotten familiar or at least skimmed the well-architected framework, it is highly recommended that even as an operations engineer, that you take a look at this relatively prescriptive guidance, which has been a big change in the last couple of years because it was just descriptive about how to implement properly or let's say best practice on AWS. That's number one. Number two, if you haven't heard of Reinforce, you've probably heard of its bigger cousin, reInvent which happens every November, December of the year. And it's where AWS announces all of the major updates, just broad spectrum across the entire AWS ecosystem. Well, imagine if there was just a conference focused on cloud security, that's called reinforce, not reinvent. We have a summary this month of what just happened at the reinforce event this year, which was a significant security focus. Now, as you can imagine, there was a lot of AI injected in that, but most of it was enhancements to existing security services. We've got a summary by Wojtek here that basically gives you a recap, obviously pun intended, about what happened at this conference, what it is, what do they talk about, what were the keynotes and the top themes. If you are involved in security at any level, and if you're in operations, you are, you probably want to at least take a skim at this and just see what major things were announced, but it's a great little summary if you weren't able to actually attend the event. That's number two. Number three. Now, if you're not familiar with AWS's GovCloud region in the United States, it's basically two regions that AWS has created that are specific for US government contracts and their related entities. GovCloud is a little different in that it doesn't always have the cutting edge updates that the private sector regions like Ohio and Oregon and Virginia have, but it focuses primarily on stability and security at a higher level. And you have to have a government contract or be working for an entity that has a government contract in order to get access to GovCloud. Now, imagine if due to GDPR or other EU requirements, you needed a sovereign data region inside of European soil. Well, 
AWS in October, November of last year actually announced that they were creating a European sovereign cloud region just for that purpose. Now, I didn't want to announce it at the time because I thought, well, that's pretty boring because I wanted to actually see what lists of services were available. And guess what? As of July 2024, they now have a list of services that will be starting in this region that actually won't be released until 2025. So we've got a long tail on this, but if you're looking and you have migration plans and you're looking for something that is data sovereign compliant for GDPR in the EU and you're looking for it on EU soil, well, here's the list of services for that. That's number three. Number four is all about S3 access grants. So this is a relatively new feature that's a new way to access data sets, particularly if you are federating your AWS account with your enterprise Active Directory accounts, meaning your on-premise Active Directory accounts. So S3 access grants basically grant, you know, map identities that are in your Active Directories, and it basically maps them to IAM, which then in turn allows you to access certain folders, data sets, or directories in S3. So you get to use this to kind of check the box and so you can actually just use one source to federate security with your already existing Active Directory service. So this integration also works with SageMaker Studio, which is really great for the data scientists and machine learning engineers that are in your life. Now, as an operations person, this is something that you need to understand because it's a new way to grant data access to S3 buckets. So take a look. Number five. We have a blog up where it's a, a post that basically explores how to use agents for Amazon Bedrock to generate infrastructure as code. I actually think this is pretty cool. I think the AI revolution has actually got some hype, but a lot of substance. And it's going to be in three to five years, really fundamentally change the way that we approach DevOps engineering. So if I click into this and we take a look, is that Agents for Bedrock is basically has a demo and it also includes RAG, which is the retrieval augmented generation, horrible name, wish they had come up with something else. But what it does is this allows you to basically orchestrate agents. This particular blog post is going to basically show you how to automate some level of model customization with a step functions workflow, basically allowing you to manipulate and create agents right out of the box. So it shows basically a functions workflow. You've got training data, training output, and it allows you to basically orchestrate this agent that does a list of variety of things. So check this out if you want to look at some implementations of how to generate infrastructure as code. As a result, it's pretty cool. They will be using the serverless application model to deploy most of the infrastructure. If you decide to run this yourself, as always, just be mindful of leaving any resources running. Even Lambda could, you know, leads to tens, if not hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, if you let it run for days, hours, weeks, months. So just be mindful if you decide to go that route. Number six has everything to do with debugging using Amazon Q and generative AI. So we all know that traditional debugging can be painful. And if you've used anything like GitHub Copilot or Gemini, formerly known as Duet, Amazon Q is AWS's answer to that. And Q for developers in particular, which has a free version and a business version. Now we've covered this before. This blog actually allows you to debug and walks you through a process of using it to actually like do some debugging. So you can identify anomalies, predict some code issues, generate debugging insights. And so they actually walk through some problematic code with a Lambda function, which has a deadlock issue and how to get Amazon Q to fix it. So worth exploring because this is a sample of the future that almost every engineer in the world is going to be headed towards. Number seven. So number seven is incredibly significant. As you may be aware, AWS has new certifications coming out in August, particularly the machine learning associates and the AI certified practitioners. So we've got a new practitioner exam, and we've got a new associates exam to go with the already new data engineering associates exam. I mean, AWS is kind of shaking things up over there, and they've retired like three or four exams, as well as retiring like six services in the last month. We'll talk about that in a separate video. So what we're here to talk about today with number seven is they're adding new exam question types. And let's take a look at this for a second. So this is actually straight off the Amazon, the AWS training and certification blog, where they're adding new question types. So typically it's multiple choice or multiple response questions where you give, you know, one out of four or one out of five answers, or you do two out of four or three out of five answers, right? So it's not just one, you got multiple responses. 
So what to expect is that one, there's going to be some ordering questions where they're basically going to give you boxes where you're going to drag and drop the order. And so here's the sample where they're basically saying, pick the three steps here and put them in order and make sure you choose them in the right order. Otherwise, the question is wrong. The other thing is matching questions. And so you're going to see it where it's like, you know, we're going to match it with, you know, this particular storage class or this particular service. So you're going to see matching questions as well. Again, a drop down box. So kind of like multiple choice, but like multiple choice, multiple choice. And then you're going to see case study questions, right? Where you're going to read a scenario, answer two or more questions about the scenario, and the scenario is the same for each question in the case study. So each question in the case study is going to be evaluated differently. So if you take a look, here's a case study with two questions. Here's another case study with two questions. But the case study is similar each time, but they're asking you basically to fully understand the case study in question and basically answer questions about it. So that gives you a good sample. There's a deeper dive here, as well as practice questions that AWS has made available. So take a look. If you're looking to take these exams, they're going to have the new question types on them. That's number seven. Number eight, last but not least, and arguably my favorite, is that there's a hands-on part one blog post about a developer's guide to how you might create your own gaming services on Kubernetes instead of using virtual machines for this. So this is pretty cool, actually, and I'm glad I covered this last. So if we take a look at this, it basically talks about what is the challenge with traditional infrastructure and how can we do that differently by using containers and whatever orchestration slash container service that we want, whether that's the Elastic Container Service or the Elastic Kubernetes Service. So how do we optimize, you know, basically game hosting with containers? And so this blog post, which is part one, by the way, is going to run through the setup for this kind of thing and talk about some of the optimizations you can do when running your own gaming server. There is some sample code here and there's a lot of hands on. So I totally encourage you to get into this. Take a look at this. I personally have done this and I can't wait for part two when it comes out. And that's number eight. Get hands on, create your own gaming services on Kubernetes. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this AWS update. Again, I'm Michael Forrester with CoCloud. We do all things DevOps, all things cloud, all things emerging AI DevOps workflows. So hit that like button, hit subscribe. Let us know what you like. And just know that if you make a request, we are highly likely to see if we can make a video in that context. We'll catch you at the next AWS update.